Hey, it's Mike here, and today, after wrestling with my scraggly winter hat hair for long enough for my camera to fall asleep, I've decided to cut my losses and just film anyway. Well, it's 2021, which is ridiculous. It's the future, we're living it. So happy new year for people who might be interested in going vegan or simply want to be sure that they can remain a healthy vegan and stay vegan through this year, through these unique times. This is a video that will hopefully help you. The pandemic appears to be an obstacle in trying pretty much anything you wanna do. Things are a little bit harder right now, emotional and otherwise, but we're gonna try and employ some tactics to help you succeed. We're even gonna talk about motivation, which I never talk about. And I even made a new magical spreadsheet just for you guys to help plan meals and create shopping lists conveniently. Let's go. All right, quick announcement. Vegan Boot Camp 2.0 is officially live at veganbootcamp.org. This has over 30 different courses for people who wanna go vegan or learn about all of this stuff to take. They have vegan mentors, they have registered vegan dietitians, and rewards for completing the courses. You can learn about all different things like cheese, the meat industry, what clothing is vegan, I'm starting to cook vegan, and even some of my videos are in it. So check it out, link below. So it's pretty clear that we need at least a few more months, maybe longer to crush this pandemic in the US. Other countries are different. I mean, if you're from Australia, you know, good on you. You're super lucky for just crushing this as well as many other countries have. But for those of us that live in places like I do in Iowa, yeah, it's a nightmare. Something as simple as going to a Walmart is like entering a civil war where you're attacked by anti-maskers. Every aisle, they're staring at you with their mouth open or just nose out, breathing in your direction. And as I mentioned before, I even saw two kids having a spit fight in the aisles of Walmart. That was a little earlier on, but the point is, even basic things like shopping and getting food can be a little bit difficult and that can add to the intimidation factor of going vegan at a time like this. But because the pandemic has been dragging on, if you're trying to do something new, if you're trying to eat healthier as a vegan or you're trying to go vegan, then now is the time. You just need to let the new year be the little spank in the butt you needed to get things going. Excuse me, I need to take a break for my hot chocolate with oat milk. It's cold outside, so. All right, now I'm gonna talk about a subject that once again, I, I just don't really cover on this channel very often and there's a reason for that. And that is motivation because you might have some motivation right now or some intention to change through motivation, but maintaining motivation is another story. So we might as well talk about it for a little bit. When I think about motivation, I think of it as a topic that has generally been soiled by shallow self-help programs, which sort of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And, and it's all about manufacturing motivation sort of out of nowhere. It always involves some like $300 summit. You know what I'm talking about, but there's a lot of things that are unique about the current situation in the world that change the landscape of motivation. That's my new book title. Come get motivated with Mike at my new retreat and read my book, Landscape of Motivation. <laughs> I almost forgot it. My point here is instead of just being randomly motivated through a flat state of normalcy, we have a pretty large event that's currently happening right now, which you can use as your dough of motivation that you can shove into your spaghetti maker machine and come out with motivation spaghetti. And for most people, that's one of two things. One, you just wanna be the healthiest person possible in case you get COVID, in case you haven't gotten it already, so that you can survive it or have no complications or long-term post-COVID stuff. You, know, you wanna have that better blood flow and artery dilation that you see on a plant-based diet. You wanna have that quick lowering of inflammation that we see after putting people on a vegan diet because of course you wanna dodge that inflammatory cytokine storm and so on. But the second reason maybe is just a little bit more shallow, but, but maybe not. And that is that you just wanna come out of this a more vibrant, attractive, you wanna be hot. Basically you wanna get hot for when the pandemic is over. Perhaps all this distancing and isolation has left you completely starved for human touch, which has led you to resort to taking 30 minute hot showers to just feel some semblance of human warmth. Sorry, that was a little harsh actually. So what you need to do is you need to hold on to that image of who you wanna be in your head so that when you have that piece of either real cheese cow pizza in front of you if you're trying to go vegan or perhaps some junky crappy vegan pizza in front of you or nearby at the frozen aisle, you go, no, I wanna be healthier and I wanna be that better person. Anyway, if it did or it didn't work, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to a little bit more logistics here because right now, 
It's probably not the best idea in places like where I live to just walk into a grocery store or go into the grocery store all the time, which means we're talking about sending pickup orders via the computer to the grocery store and picking them up if you are lucky enough to have that service in your area. I believe all the Walmarts in the US now have this option so you can avoid the skirmish of aerosolized mucus that is going to be shot in your direction down the grocery aisles of Walmart. <laughs> For those who are confused by all my Walmart references, Walmart as a store policy decided to not enforce their mask mandate because people were getting violent with the workers so they did it to make their workers safer, which yeah, worked in terms of violence, but not in terms of COVID. There's some good articles on this, like this one showcasing a Walmart worker that got COVID and went into massive medical debt. Anyway, moving on. In normal world, normal times, you might just roll up to the grocery store, walk through the aisles, get inspired to buy some stuff and make some certain dishes. But now you might land on some homepage of a grocery store and just draw a blank and have no idea what you're gonna eat. And either way, if it's a place where it's safe to go into the grocery store or not, it's great to have a meal plan or at least some ideas of meals that you wanna make and what you need to buy. And that brings me to Mike's meal planner and shopping list maker. Because of my own disorganization in this area and trying to keep eating healthy, unprocessed foods as much as possible, I made this, of course, free spreadsheet. And you can plan an entire week out with this thing. And the part that I am most proud of is that when you type in the ingredients for the dish that you wanna make, all of the ingredients in all of the ingredients boxes throughout the week will be shoved into one single box, your shopping list at the bottom. You can then just reference this instead of jumping around or you can copy and paste it and send it to somebody who's shopping or send it to yourself so you have it on your phone easily. This might be completely useless or there might be someone out there who finds a use out of it. And if that happens, then it's all worth it. Just to show it in action, maybe you want cocaine waffles, ingredients, almond milk, cocaine, and of course, whole wheat, gotta stay healthy, boom. That's all in the list below. Again, just copy that, paste that, buy that stuff. Don't buy that stuff, it's illegal. <laughs> and looking at a calendar like this, batch cooking really starts to make sense because you can see that cooking one meal, buying one set of ingredients can just start blocking out several of those meal times and therefore more efficient, save you some money, a little bit more work in the beginning. And I do have an entire video on batch cooking that I will link below and at the end. Once again, I do wanna talk about preventing failures. And in the past I focus on, yeah, get enough calories, hop onto chronometer, type in what you're getting if you're first going vegan, or perhaps even if you've been vegan for a while to make sure you are getting enough food so you don't get too hungry and then resort to overprocessed foods or perhaps failing in that case. But this time I wanna talk more about the acute effects of being hungry in that moment when you're hungry, what happens, how to prevent it, not having that food on hand in front of you or easily makeable is how not just new vegans fail at being vegan, but how again, those old school, older vegans, long-term vegans end up falling back into less healthy foods and not feeling as good. To emphasize how bad this can be, yes, I'm managing to throw a study in here because why not? This is Mike the Vegan after all. And that has to do with the Israeli judges and their parole hearings. Now, these are hearings where criminals are up for parole. They're seeing a lot of different inmates and saying either, yes, you can be released based off your good behavior under certain conditions of parole or no, go back to jail, do not collect $200, do not pass go. When these judges started their day after breakfast, they started with a parole rate, meaning saying, yes, you can go out of prison of 65%. But then as they, they got closer to lunch, that went down closer to a 0%. And guess what? If they were to have a snack, it would bounce right back up to around 65%, yes. Humans are so obviously animals. Yes, we can make intellectual decisions, but those can quickly break down with things as simple as getting hungry. Oh, you need a little snack break, you little judgy? Of course, statistically, there wasn't a worse batch of inmates closer to lunch that didn't deserve parole as much. They were just getting hungry in various biochemical things, such as perhaps lower blood glucose and so forth was leading them to make a different decision under roughly the same condition. So their emotions of maybe being a little bit hangry and so forth actually hampered their ability to make consistent intellectual decisions. And so applying this to people trying to stay vegan or eating a healthier vegan diet, it is so obvious why people make those mistakes in and around mealtime. <laughs> Nobody wakes up, has breakfast, a nice vegan meal, and then goes, 
oops, I'm gonna fail my vegan diet and I'm deciding now to fail. No, it's like they're out at a party or something. We don't have those anymore. But there's like some cheesy stuff around, high calorie animal foods that their body knows about. And because they're starving, they eat it and they fail and then it's just a landslide from there. Cheese slide. Next thing you know, they're drowning in fondue. Lost some good vegan sprouts that way. But this whole Israeli judge study makes me wonder like what horrible decisions have been made throughout history by people who are just hungry. Uh, hey Japan, what side of World War II would you like to be on? The whole world or Italy and Germany? It's 1159, I'm really hungry, so I'm just gonna go with Germany. Don't make the same mistake. Don't let yourself get too hungry. I also have to wonder if people who are fully metabolic healthy would have such a dramatic effect like those Israeli judges. I mean, if you're metabolically healthy and you don't have insulin resistance, blood glucose issues, and so on, would you have such an effect from this? I mean, I feel like when I get hungry, I'm not like angry. Maybe I do get a little bit hangry sometimes, especially when we're talking about going like one hour, two hour past eating, yeah. But still, as you're approaching lunchtime in a normal eating schedule to have this much of a difference is crazy. I just wanna experiment on myself and, and see how I make decisions, but let me know what you think. <laughs> and finally, for people who are just going vegan, I think it's really important to realize how many sort of clutch options you can have for eating out nowadays at restaurants that are pretty much everywhere as a fallback or as a part of your transition. I mean, we're talking about just ordering things fresco at Taco Bell. You can eat a huge amount of foods. Also, of course, Burger King, you can easily make that vegan Whopper. You know, you can pull together some vegan stuff at Pizza Hut and so on. These places are everywhere, at least in the US. And one channel that I see has a lot of videos on eating out and stuff like that is Ashley Wicca, a younger vegan YouTuber. And I'll link her channel below. In summary, plan ahead, figure out what some of your meals are gonna be, even if it's just one or two days in the future. Also, just don't make decisions when you're hungry. That's probably a good life rule, but also applies in terms of food choices. And finally, feel free to use my spreadsheet. The link will be below. I mean, look at the equation for the shopping list box. It's beautiful, but let me know if, if it has any kinks that need to be worked out. Just please remember to download the spreadsheet first and then edit your own version because in the past people have requested to edit the original file and that notifies me, not a big deal, but it would just be great if that didn't happen. But the most important thing here is in this pandemic, things are a little bit harder, create a little bit more thought, but if you're trying to improve yourself, if you're trying to be healthier, if you're trying to do less damage to the planet, if you're trying to not harm animals, you can still do it with just a little bit of extra thought. And then that will just become life as usual. The pattern will become easy like your previous pattern was, and it'll all be good. Or at least it better be good 2021. I have high expectations, but I'm not jinxing it once again. <laughs> all right, feel free to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I've been told once again that a lot of people just aren't seeing my videos when they come out. so. Feel free to check that. Maybe I need to post more like community things and stories on there, which I've never done, but uh, I'll try to make it so you guys can see those videos and you can try to make it so you see them too if you wanna see them. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. I think that was my highest words per minute on an outro and I think we all know why.